voraciously hungry and at her physical prime, Sue was a risk taker by nature. She likely looked for food and found trouble, getting injured but healing quickly. But somehow it was the infection and not the Gorgosaur that stopped dead in its tracks. The Gorgosaur survived to fight another day. Phil suspects that wasn't just luck. He wants to see what he can learn about the Gorgosaur's immune system by looking at an animal it shares an ancestor with, the gators. Like the Gorgosaur, alligators are ferocious predators. They're also remarkably infection resistant, considering their disease-laden swamp environment. At Florida's alligator farm, Phil can study how crocodilians fend off infection and maybe learn a thing or two about dinosaurs. He tracks down paleobiologist Greg Erickson, who's been sinking his teeth into the mouths of alligators. A gator's infectious smile can hide a mouthful of bad teeth and rotten gums. Luckily, like a dinosaur, an alligator constantly replaces its teeth. So instead of having two sets of teeth like us, these animals might, uh, you know, go through 3,000 teeth in their lifetime. Sorry, 3,000 teeth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, just look around. You, if you look in the dirt around here, you'll find lots of teeth. So how, how, do, how, do they, how do they lose these teeth? These teeth in a big adult will last about a year, and then the root will er erode away, and another tooth will push up behind it. This will fall out, and voila, they're in the dirt. Alligators are the only living reptile to do this. Sometimes things go wrong. They'll shatter a freshly erupted tooth and it creates an abscess and they'll get an infection in there. What will happen is the bone will go right up over the top of the, of the tooth socket and uh, seal it off and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll have no more ability to replace teeth at that point. Greg doesn't have to look far for a disgusting example. This goes to show, you know, we, we don't need a, a living Gorgosaur to understand how that occurred. There it is right there. It's the same anatomy. Even with serious gum infections, alligators lose their teeth, not their life. But other wounds can have more dire consequences. Today, Greg Erickson pays a house call to a rather uncooperative patient. One of its back legs was bitten off, and the other's got a nasty-looking open wound. They're moving the injured gator out of the fray to give it some R&R &R in its own pen. Its wounds need attention. But incredibly, neither leg is infected. Remarkable, because a bite from one of these creatures is like waging bacterial warfare. The Cretaceous world of the Gorgosaur wasn't so different. A diet of raw and rotting flesh doesn't exactly promote oral hygiene. So a dinosaur bite could deliver death two ways, fast kill and slow infection. To prove the power of an alligator's bite, Greg's going to measure its bite force. Easier said than done. All right, you can go ahead and slide the mouthful off. Like the Gorgosaur, alligators live and die by their long, toothy jaws. Okay, everybody hang on. Nice set of dentures you have, my friend. Oh, I missed it. Ready? Do it again. Just ready? Yep. Oh yeah. Good bite. Two thousand two hundred and ten pounds. When you say two thousand pounds, what is that? Is, is that like a two thousand pound weight landing on your foot? Yeah, a, a ton, a ton of bite force. So it's uh, if, if if this animal were to get a hold of you, if you can bench press a ton, you can get out. Otherwise, you're pretty much there for the rest of the day. If an alligator has that power, just imagine the bite force of a tyrannosaur. Obviously, with depending on the size of prey it's going to attack, what sort of things can these jaws deliver in terms of injuries? Well, just the blunt trauma of being hit with a ton of force like that is, is going to cause damage. It can shatter bones, uh, induce immediate shock. You can imagine, you know, it's like, like getting hit by a car. Yep. With similar force, a Gorgosaur's bite could shatter bone and drive infection deep into the 